Lung Volumes and Capacities Introduction Pulmonary Function Testing, PFT, is a non-invasive way to help determine overall lung health based on values for volumes, airflow, alveolar diffusion, and underlying inflammation. The most commonly used pulmonary function test is spirometry. A spirometer consists of an air-filled drum floating in a water-filled chamber. As the person breathes air in and out of the drum through a tube connecting the mouth to the air chamber, the drum rises and falls in the water chamber. This rise and fall can be recorded as a spirogram, which is calibrated to volume changes. The pen records inspiration as an upward deflection and expiration as a downward deflection. Lung Volumes and Capacities The normal lung volume values are calculated according to variables such as age, sex, and height. Generally, the values are lower for females. The following lung volumes and lung capacities, that is the sum of two or more lung volumes, can be determined using the pulmonary function tests. Tidal volume. The volume of air entering or leaving the lungs during a single breath. Average value under resting conditions is 500 milliliters. Inspiratory reserve volume. The extra volume of air that can be maximally inspired over and above the typical resting tidal volume. The inspiratory reserve volume is accomplished by maximal contraction of the diaphragm, external intercoastal muscles, and accessory inspiratory muscles. Average value of inspiratory reserve volume is 3,300 milliliters. Inspiratory capacity. The maximum volume of air that can be inspired at the end of a normal, quiet expiration Inspiratory capacity is equal to inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume. Average value of inspiratory capacity is 3,800 milliliters. Coming to the vital capacity. The maximum volume of air that can be moved out during a single breath following a maximal inspiration. The subject first inspires maximally then expires maximally. Vital capacity is equal to inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. The vital capacity represents the maximum volume change possible within the lungs. It is rarely used because the maximal muscle contractions involved become exhausting, but it is useful in ascertaining the functional capacity of the lungs. The average value of vital capacity is 4,800 milliliters. Expiratory reserve volume. The extra volume of air that can be actively expired by maximally contracting the expiratory muscles beyond that normally passively expired at the end of a typical resting tidal volume. Average value of expiratory reserve volume is 1,000 milliliters. Residual volume. The minimal volume of air remaining in the lungs even after a maximal expiration. Average value of residual volume is 1,200 milliliters. The residual volume cannot be measured directly with a spirometer because this volume of air does not move into and out of the lungs. It can be determined indirectly, however, through gas dilution techniques involving inspiration of a known quantity of harmless tracer gas such as helium. Measuring residual volume. Measuring residual volume and in turn calculating functional residual capacity and total lung capacity can be helpful in monitoring obstructive and restrictive lung disease. The functional residual capacity or residual volume can show if the lungs are not emptying like they should during exhalation or if the lungs are smaller than they should be. We can use helium dilution, nitrogen washout tests, or body plethysmography. 
functional residual capacity. The volume of air in the lungs at the end of a normal passive expiration. Functional residual capacity is equal to expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Average value for functional residual capacity is 2,200 milliliters. Total lung capacity. The maximum volume of air that the lungs can hold. Total lung capacity is equal to vital capacity plus residual volume. Average value of total lung capacity is 6,000 milliliters. Forced vital capacity. It is the volume of gas exhaled from the completely inflated lungs during a maximal expiratory effort. Forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1. The volume of air that can be expired during the first second of expiration in a vital capacity determination. Usually, FEV1 is about 80% of vital capacity that is normally 80% of the air that can be forcibly expired from maximally inflated lungs within one second. This measurement indicates the maximal air flow rate that is possible from the lungs. FEV1 by FVC is a ratio of the two measurements and is important for differentiating between respiratory pathologies. A normal ratio is 0 0.8. FVC is equal to 5.5 liters. FEV1 is equal to 4.5 liters. The FEV1 by FVC ratio is 0 0.8. Let's take a look at the applied aspects. Measurement of the lung's various volumes and capacities is useful to the diagnostician. Two general categories of respiratory dysfunction yield abnormal results during spirometry obstructive lung disease, and restrictive lung disease. Other conditions affecting respiratory function include diseases impairing diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the pulmonary membranes, reduced ventilation because of mechanical failure, as with neuromuscular disorders affecting the respiratory muscles, inadequate perfusion, failure of adequate pulmonary blood flow, or ventilation perfusion imbalances involving a poor matching of air and blood so that efficient gas exchange cannot occur. Some lung diseases are actually a complex mixture of different types of functional disturbances. To determine what abnormalities are present, the diagnostician relies on a variety of respiratory function tests in addition to spirometry, including X-ray examination, blood gas determinations, and tests to measure the diffusion capacity of the alveolar capillary membrane. Diffusion capacity. Diffusion capacity of the lungs for carbon monoxide is a pulmonary function test that measures the efficacy of the gas exchange. This measures the difference in the partial pressures of carbon monoxide in inspired and expired air and is part of spirometry. Because hemoglobin has a high affinity for carbon monoxide, it can be assumed that the difference between inspired and expired carbon monoxide is the amount that diffuses into the blood. The quantity of carbon monoxide that the patient breathes out is subtracted from the amount breathed in. The resulting value is used to calculate diffusion capacity of the lungs for carbon monoxide, which we use to estimate the diffusion capacity of oxygen. This testing is very useful for both the diagnosis and assessment of diseases that impair gas exchange, such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Applied Aspect Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a restrictive lung disease characterized by the progressive fibrosis of the peribronchiolar interstitium, restricting the amount of air that can be held by the lungs. On spirometry testing, this will be seen as a global reduction in lung volumes, but a normal to increase FEV1 by FVC ratio.
These fibrotic changes also increase the distance between the air held in the alveoli and the capillaries of the lungs. This in turn reduces the patient's diffusion capacity of oxygen, which will be seen by a decreased diffusion capacity of the lungs for carbon monoxide. Bronchoprovocation testing Bronchoprovocation testing is a key pulmonary function test to determine whether a patient has obstructive disease that is reactive, most commonly asthma. Baseline spirometry is performed. A provoking medication such as methacholine binds to M3 or histamine binds to H1 is administered and then spirometry is repeated. If the test is positive, the medication causes bronchoconstriction, provoking asthma symptoms and causing FEV1 to decrease by at least 20%. Antagonizing medication such as albuterol is administered to reverse the effects of the provoking drug. A positive test has an obstructive pattern, concave flow volume loop, as you can see in this image, as the constriction of the airways in asthma creates an obstruction to expiration. This test, though sensitive, can have false positive results in a variety of other respiratory conditions.